What I want to know is, did you do, do you know why the tomato was feared in Europe for more than two hundred years? Oh, uh, I feel was it poisonous? They thought it was poisonous. Oh, you you'd be right to think that. Okay. So they they um in the late seventeen hundreds, a large percentage of Europeans feared the tomato. They called it the poison apple. Um, <sighs> the reason for this was that people would eat them and they would they would they would die of poisoning of some sort. And what it was was that. Um, tomatoes were typically in that period uh, quite like a sort of upper class food and so people would be eating their uh, they'd be eating their tomatoes off of pewter plates ah, and the acidity uh, it was, uh, has a high lead content and the, the pewter um, oh, hang on I've just said that I want to make sure it is lead pewter it is, is uh, an alloy of lead and yes. something that makes it tougher um Gosh, I don't remember what it is. I cannot remember. Carry on. Um, but I'll, I'll do your job and I'll, I'll have yeah, a little no, sorry, look sorry. on Google. Here, here, okay. here it is. Here it is. So um, it's high in lead content. Yeah. And because tomatoes are so high in acidity, they were basically um, burning the lead sort of off and people were in were on their tomatoes eating pure lead and getting lead poisoning. And so it was purely a sort of upper class problem if you will that that the sort of the upper classes were getting pewter lead poisoning and they believed that it was directly coming from the tomato not from the plate itself and uh, i just think this this is like really incredible that it was it was counted as a as a really deadly vegetable <laughs> what so, but why did some people continue eating it well um that's a good question one I wish I had the, uh, I had the answer to. <laughs> Sorry, I just dug but, a hole for you, didn't I? There you go. So no one, no one made the connection between the plate and poison at the time. That the t- the tomato was picked as the culprit. Wow. And then it went on that there was there was a green tomato worm, uh, who was a it was a pest that would grow on the tomatoes, go through and eat the tomatoes, uh, measuring three to four inch- inches in length with a horn sticking out of its back. This is a real thing. Yeah, yeah. It began taking over tomato patches across uh, across the state, and so they were. Sounds really scary. They were an object of much, much terror. terror. <laughs> it, it being currently regarded as poisonous as, and imparting a poisonous quality to the fruit if it should have the chance to crawl upon it. Um, an object of, su- of much terror. I feel such an old way of saying it. It's so cool. Like, an object of much terror. Much terror. Like, today I'd be like, it's really scary, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, I just want to find the, there was here we go so there was an object much earlier. it was currently regarded as poisonous there we go. wait so they thought the worm was poisonous th- as well exactly mm. and uh, here it is around the same time period a man by the name of Dr. Fuller in New York was quoted in the Syracuse Standard saying he had found a, f- a five inch t- uh, tomato worm in his garden he captured the worm in a bottle and said it was as poisonous as a rattlesnake when it would when it would throw spittle at its prey uh, according to Fuller's account, once sounds the like skin... a legit scientist, doesn't exactly. he? <laughs> once the skin came into contact with the spittle, it swelled immediately, and um, like this a was a few hours later, the victim would w- <laughs> seize up and die. <laughs> okay, but like this was not, this was this was a real fear. Like this wasn't a this wasn't like a small localized thing that that there was a breakout of something in 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 one area in in across Europe. The tomato was a feared vegetable. It was it was the poison apple, um, mostly due to lead poisoning. And it wasn't until I think, hang on, sorry, it was. Let me find the date. I think it was in the early 19, 1800s, uh, 20, 2000, 1900s, 1900s. Probably that, wasn't early in the two thousands. It definitely was not. <laughs> so my my childhood of fearing tomatoes. Uh, I've, I've, I've I've lost I've lost yeah, I've lost the date. But um, you know the, sorry, go on. no no keep going. I was just going to say there's a similar story, not quite similar, but with potatoes. You know this one? Uh, no, no. There was no one ate potatoes for a long time. I can't remember if they thought they were poisonous, so they just didn't like them. And so I think it was some French king uh, or like some French scientist. I didn't look this up. We did a video about it ages ago. But okay. the gist of it was there's a French king or whoever or emperor or whatever it was at the time. Mm. And uh, one of his scientists. And they were like, how are we going to get people to like potatoes? And they're like, well, we'll put them in your garden and we'll put guards by the potato patch. Clever. And so people were like, oh, there must be something good in there. And they were like, oh, they're guarding potatoes. potatoes. I bet they're amazing. And then people got super into potatoes. Nice. And that's why we have potatoes. Fancy like why that. they're popular in Europe. Yeah. That's and potatoes are great because they're easy to grow. Calorie dense. They grow even time. when you don't want them to grow. They grow everywhere. They like, do? So yeah, so if, if you have like a potato patch, 
and you don't pull out every potato, you will find potatoes for like three years in that patch. <laughs> like it's it's a bit of a no. Another one you have to be careful of is mint. Right? If you, really? When you plant mint, plant it in a, not a patch, plant it in a pot. I just got a uh, uh, hydroponic garden. What is that? I, I bought it. <laughs> I saw it a, a while ago and I was like, oh, it's really expensive. And I went to the store the other day and it was like 40% off Black Friday or whatever. Nice. Okay. And I was like, oh, screw it, I'll get it. It was like about 100 quid. Go for gold. And it's this thing. And it's quite big. And it grows like 10 plants nine plants and you plant you you put them in and then it's got this light on top and it just goes on uh six o'clock in the morning it turns off at 10 o'clock at night the the light you fill it up with water in like you just pour water in it waters it all automatically like self-containing. and these plants grow and like after a month we had like tons of lettuce That's amazing. and the tomatoes are still growing Gotta be careful with lettuces basil. as well lettuces. <laughs> well they're all like super self-contained well lettuces you have to you have to cut them down otherwise once they spread their seeds they just grow like yeah. even in your house, I'm, I'm gonna sure just yeah, be like, oh, let's why is the lettuce out of the steak again? <laughs> it's everywhere. Yeah, but no, I t- like I no. So tomatoes, you don't have to fear them. I just looked; it was it was towards the eighteen, uh, the late eighteen hundreds that the the fear had subsided, and they found that if you keep them canned and uh, canned and sterilized, then then tomatoes are safe and good to eat. They are probably one of my favorite vegetables. Mm-hmm. Good little tip. Where if cooking with uh, if cooking with canned tomatoes, add just a little sprinkle of sugar because when they get can- when they're canned, they just get that slightly bitter can taste, and huh. a little bit of sugar, preferably brown, yeah. will just take that out, or a bit of like orange zest or something like that.